Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, I just thank you, O Lord, for being in your house once again. Thank you, O God, for giving me a word for your people. I pray, O God, that your word falls on good ground and takes root in our hearts, O Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. So, as we continue on our journey with the Lord's Prayer, we get to the part now um, well let me back up for a second I guess I wrote it down I should probably be reading off of this right <laughs> so the, the first half of the Lord's Prayer is directed to God's person, God's program, God's purpose. Now this part that we're going to start today, the focus is more on our need for provision, pardon, protection, and preservation. And the order is intentional because we should be honoring God before raising our personal needs. Now, Jesus expressed this order when he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you, which is in uh, the same chapter 6, but when you get down to verse 33. I'm just getting to my place here. And so, when Jesus responded to the disciples' request to teach them how to pray, he gave them the most perfect and comprehensive outline of prayer. Now, We've talked about it the last few weeks, and the I call it the thy part of the prayer, right? Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done. Right. And now, we're focusing on the, the us. Give us, forgive us, keep us, lead us. Right. If we want to put it more in, in perspective of what we're going to be focusing on. And these again, these last parts, starting with today, give us this day our daily bread. What does that mean to you when you hear or you say, give us our daily bread? Feed us. Feed us, feed us with God. So you're saying spiritual. Okay. Anybody else? Say it again. Give us the strength as God is our guide to handle each day. Anyone else? Oh. Overall, be that spiritual or physical. So, so that, that's all correct, right? I was, I'm not going to say what's wrong or what's right, right? It's, it's, it's all good, right? It's all good. And so when we say, give us today our daily bread, what we're acknowledging is that God is the source Of our strength. God is the source of our life. 
In the beginning, right, we talked about hallowed be thy name. Holy, O God, is your name. We're referencing again to God, God's importance in our lives, right? Give us today our daily bread. For, for many, we, we may think of it as God provides the food that we need, right? And someone else said, yes, and God provides the spiritual nourishment we need through the reading of the word, Amen. right? And again, it's, you, you're correct. Yes and yes, right? And so... I think about the, the Israelites when they were, we're hungry. Back in Exodus, I'm just going, Lord, we're hungry. Moses, you brought us out here to die. We want to go back to where the grapes were as big as my head, and there, I could just pick the plums and the pears off the tree and eat. And you brought us out here to die. And what did God provide? He provided them manna. They didn't know what it was, and he gave them specific instructions, didn't he? He said, get your full, eat, but don't save any because it's not going to be any good the next day. Now, of course, as human beings, what do some people do? They, they saved it, and they found out the hard way. Well, you know, no, that's not any good, Right? But during the time of need, God provided them what they needed. The manna, the, uh, what are they called, the birds? What? Uh, that was Elijah, right? He was hungry. He was scared. He was hiding. And God provided rest. And he had the ravens come and feed him. He provided him physically and spiritually because he knew he needed rest for the journey. Right? Meditate on my word is what God tells us. That helps us in our spiritual journey for the word to take root, not just in our minds, but in our heart. God, give us today our daily bread. This prayer gives us more than what our minds can even conceive to think about who God is and what God wants to do for us. Give us today our daily bread. It, there's a couple of things I want to point out here. The first is, hmm. the prayer for God's provision, we kind of just talked about that, right? Our physical shelter, food, and clothing. These are all things that are essential to us for everyday living, right? Before the, the sin of of Adam and Eve, they walked around free. I'm going to use the word free. They walked around freely, right? Before they knew that they were naked, they just walked around free and they, they ate and life was, life was grand, right? And then and God made sure they had everything that they needed. 
Okay, because that's another sermon for another day. Well, I'm going to try to stay focused here. Spiritually, how are we fed? Spiritually, how are you fed? Let me rephrase that. Read the Bible. And what else? Prayer, right? Two of the essentials needed to help us strengthen our relationship with God. Can we live without it? Uh huh. <laughs> right, 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 right. We can live without it. This Bible and prayer. How fruitful. Are we without God in our lives? A dead tree. tree. Listen, Deacon Mark, I need somebody else to answer. Thank you. (laughs) I, I appreciate you, but I want somebody else to answer. (laughs) So we... We, we move from the, the, the principle of providing our daily needs, food, shelter, clothing. And then we move to the principles of God's provision, right? And the three essential principles of receiving God's provision, what's, what do you think number one is? Think about it. Say it out loud. Obedience. Obedience. (laughs) If we want to receive from the hand of God, we must live within the will of God, right? We must be obedient. And people hear the word obedient, and immediately our minds turn to a negative tone. Right? Just like that word submission. It turns, right? I see faces. They're like, yeah, 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 exactly. Right? But in our relationship with God, for us to truly receive what God has for us and to accept what God has for us. We have to be obedient by being in a relationship with Christ. How can you receive something and appreciate what you, what you have or what you've received when you don't have a relationship? Somebody could come and give you something and you'll say, oh, give you a nice watch. Let's, let's take a watch. And you don't know this person. Ed, if you walk to somebody up in the store and say, here, here's a watch. They go, oh, well, that's nice. Thank you, sir. And they'll walk away and go, why did that man give me a watch? Is this really whatever kind of watch it is? Timex, do they still make that? That's still a watch? Okay. Or uh, Rolex, right? Well, why did he get that to me? Probably stolen, right? Right. But if you gave said watch Rolex to, you know, I'm hoping, 
You gave that such Rolex to your wife as a gift for uh, a wedding anniversary, it, it would be more appreciated, Amen. right? That's, that's the hope, yeah. right? Because you, have, because you have a relationship with her or, and it's, it's appreciated. Our obedience to God through reading of the word and prayer and community with one another is important for us to be able to receive what it is God wants us to have. And what God gives us most of the time is just not for us. It's for us to give away to somebody else to help them, right? If, if you're one of those people that, that have just about everything that you want and you have those family members that say, I don't know what to get them. They have everything. What do you give a person that has everything, right? God has everything. What do we give to God when God gives to us? We give it to other people. When we say, Lord, give us today our daily bread, there are many who don't have the necessities in life. They just are. That's just the way our society is, is made up. But God gives to us, he supplies our needs so we can in turn help supply the needs of others. See how that works? Some people call it passing it forward. Some, there's a couple of other names, right? They make movies about it all the time, right? You're in the line at Tim Hortons, and you, you pay for the person behind you, and you start a little trend for about 15 minutes. For about, for about 15 minutes, I timed it one day. It lasts from the time somebody does a good deed for the person behind them, and it usually goes for a good 15 minutes. And then somebody just messes it up, right? We're trying to pass it forward, right? Give us today our daily bread. If God has done something good for you in your life and has made a difference, what good is it to hold on to that and not share it with somebody else? Somebody that you're going to come in contact with throughout the day is going to need some type of encouragement. Somebody's going through something, yeah. right? And I'm not just talking about the physical, the financial part. I'm talking about somebody needs a refreshing of the soul. Yeah. Somebody needs some encouragement because life has beat them down. Yeah. Some kind words from us will lift them up. Give us today our daily bread. We're passing it forward to somebody. We're sharing what God is giving us to somebody else so that they can develop a relationship with God themselves. So that they would know that God is real. Right? We can talk about it, but we also have to be about it and intentional with people sharing our story or sharing what we have with other people so that they know, yes, God is truly real because this person shared with me, this person listened to me. I've been praying. I wasn't a believer. I didn't believe. And God brought you into my life today. You lifted my spirits today. I was going to take my life today. And you came and you, you changed my perspective. 
You gave me what I needed. God used you, and you saved my life. True stories. This happens every day. And it comes from being obedient. Because that's where I started, right? Obedience. I was getting back there. I was getting back there. Right? It's all about being obedient. And when we say, Lord, give us today our daily bread, we're asking Christ to give us more of himself. We're asking to increase to increase our faith, to increase our belief that Jesus is real. Because we have to remember we serve a living God. God is not dead. There's a few songs about it. I will sing it if I can remember the tune. But God is not dead. We serve a living God. And we say, Lord, give, give to us today our, our daily bread. Lord, give me more of you so I can survive this life and these things that are going to happen to me so I don't fall. Give to me today my daily bread, O oh God, so that when all Hades breaks loose all around me, I can continue to function and keep my eyes on you. Yes. That's what we're asking for. So that when people see me and they know what I've been through, that my house has been foreclosed on, or my car has been repossessed. And they're wondering why I still have a smile on my face and continue to walk around like nothing's happened, or I just went through a horrible divorce. Why are you still smiling? Because, Lord, give to me today my daily bread strengthens us to endure whatever it is. My mom died. My dad passed away. My husband went on to be with the Lord. My wife, my child, and as much as it hurts, Lord, today I believe that you will help carry me through this day. Today. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about today. You will give me my daily bread to make it through today. Tomorrow's a whole nother day. But today, God, thank you. To, today, God, the sickness has gotten me. I don't feel well. But today, Lord, give me my daily bread so I can make it through today. Because if you finish reading chapter 6, it tells us about not worrying about tomorrow, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, how you're going to dress, what you're going to do. Our focus is supposed to be on God. Y'all quiet on me now. How else do you get through? Because when we lean on our own understanding... We falter, we get into our own heads, and things go bad quickly. Amen. Don't they? But when you keep your focus on God and say, God, give me what I need for this moment, God will show up. But you have to believe, you got to have faith that God is able to do what the word says God is able to do. And then you, again, you don't keep it to yourself. You pass it on to somebody else to encourage them.
I'm telling you, I'm not talking to you about what I heard. I'm talking to you about what I know. And I know the things that I've been through that ordinarily would have broke me. I know it would have broke you. But yet here you are today still standing on the promises of God. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And it's through your experiences that you share with other people that helps them to get through, that helps strengthen them, that pulls them up when they don't think that they can lift their head up. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. The ultimate bread is Jesus Christ himself. Ultimately. Because that's what we're asking for. And it is only Christ that sustains us. I want somebody to hear that today. It's only Christ that sustains us. No matter what you're going through. Is it the drugs? They're not going to sustain you. Only God can. Is it the alcohol? Absolutely not. Jack can't do nothing for you. Only God can. Is it the food? Well, yeah, we need food to sustain us. But I'm talking about to the point where, where we overeat and things like that. That's not going to sustain you. Only God can. God gave us professionals. He gave people knowledge to do things to help heal us. But it's still all through God. So remember, the next time you say, Lord, give us today our daily bread. What does that truly mean to you? What is it that you're asking for? What is it that you're looking for God to do today for you? And in return, what is it that you can do for somebody else? Amen? And so <clears throat> the, the Bible says in, in Romans, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you believe that Jesus died, he was buried, that he rose again, You believe in the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you're saved. Right? It's a testament of our faith. It's a testament of who we are and whose we are. But I put that invitation out there because, you know, I've, and I have, I've been taking it for granted thinking believe, thinking everybody that that comes is is a member or has professed who God is openly right but it's a, it's a requirement right that we profess who God is to each other so I'm taking this moment. Does anybody who wants to come and be a part of the family of God, 
I'm taking this opportunity to give you, if you want to come up, if you want to stand where you are, you raise your hand, okay, that you accept God as your Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The time, the times that we are, are living in right now, it is crucial, it is crucial that we get our stuff together. It is crucial that we get our stuff, our stuff together. That we really, who are you going to depend on? You're going to continue to depend on yourself or are we truly going to depend on God? And are we going to share God with the people that are around us? Don't take for granted because everybody that shows up on Sunday morning knows who God is. We have people that come and visit all the time who may not know. Truly, they may not have that relationship. Okay? So just keep passing it forward. Amen. Edith, I, I acknowledge you and we'll talk right because yes. All right. So if you would, why don't we stand up?